Oh. Audio is live. Let's make our picture live. Hey, guys. Hey. What's going on? <laughs> I hope you guys have been having a uh, good week so far. I know it's just Monday. <laughs> Crazy. Just Monday. But it's 100 degrees here. And yeah. um, luckily in the room we're in, it's not quite that hot. But... It's uh, about 80 in this room. It's about 80. <laughs> the AC is <laughs> trying to do its work, but we have a, a southern exposure wall uh, with a window, and I spent five hours on a sidewalk in the sun today working. Yeah, so... So if I pass out, just keep painting. Just ignore the fact <laughs> that I'm gone. Just be like, if you hear this big thud, it was like, it was Paul passing out. <laughs> Have you drank a lot of water? That's the most I drank a lot of water. <laughs> and that one beer I had earlier has got me feeling a little looped already. Oh, boy. <laughs> so just, uh, just a little heads up. We're trying some new equipment tonight. Yeah, the picture looks good. picture does look good. We tried the lights a different, little bit different, and we got this fancy new thing. And um, we're going to hope everything works better. We're kind of working towards taking the software out of the equation and going strictly to hardware which yeah. in theory should work better we've almost been doing go box for a year now so yeah i think our qu equipment it's time for it to evolve and we yeah. were able to get some uh, new mixer panel that may, will make things way easier yeah and this is actually is clearer and better <laughs> this is actually our 12th month <clears throat> of go box subscription yeah so we could almost One celebrate year. a year yeah. almost well not quite but it's close this is our 12th month um of doing the live stream videos and we've evolved quite a bit since that first. A lot, yeah. What was our first one? Was Toka Tea Falls? Yep, Toka Tea Falls and the Bonfire one. Yeah. Which you guys can still buy those kits if you hadn't subscribed I'm at that point. I'm actually thinking really seriously about re-editing those two videos since they... They probably need it. <laughs> yeah. Remember, we had a lot of trouble with that very first video. Yeah. Like, a lot, a lot. of trouble. A lot of trouble. So anyway, uh, let us know if uh, you can hear everything. It looks like we've got a couple people watching. Yeah, um, uh, post a comment if, if anything's coming through weird audio-wise. Like we, we can see ourselves on the monitor. We just can't hear ourselves. So if we sound like we're underwater or <laughs> robotic or yodeling, like that was one thing before, let us know in the comments, and we can adjust as needed. There is a small delay between you guys commenting and it getting to us and uh that's just kind of the way things go hopefully you guys are keeping cool wherever you are mm -hmm. and uh we're gonna paint a cute bear today so this is called lady bear and uh, paul's gonna zoom in on the painting there it is really cute it looks like there's just few colors in there just some greenish blues but there's actually a lot of colors going on in this painting we use all the colors that came with your kit, which would be the uh, white, black, sapphire, daffodil, yellow, ruby red, and then your bonus color, which is Bahama blue, which I know you guys have used before several times because it is such a good color. And in this, uh, the bear, we don't use a ton of black. It's probably the least um, color, least amount of color we use. Mm -hmm. But we do have, uh, rather than just blue green throughout here, there's yellow, there's purple, there's a thousand shades of blue <laughs> and green and then we've got this cute little little one and only time well no we use red to make the purple but the only like bare red in this painting <laughs> bare red <laughs> i got you was that intentional no i just realized it was an accident <laughs> it's a cute little ladybug don't be worried about drawing the bear out i have that down to where i teach you shape by shape as we go along and in all the years of doing that, uh, especially with kids, that's where I ended up teaching things that way, where we draw a circle here, a triangle here, that kind of thing. As long as you just pay attention to what we're drawing and don't think ahead of like, oh, I have to draw a bare forehead or that kind of thing. Just relax. I've got and a go bare with forehead. The flow. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting bigger. 45 years. Of <laughs> I figured I'd be bald by now. You know, I thought you would too. And you Looking still, at your and you still familial history. I remember I used to, like, every once in a while I'd put my hands on your head and, like, push your hair back and go, okay, am I going to be okay with this? <laughs> wow, that's pretty shallow. <laughs> hey, I was, like, 19. I was that's super true. shallow. That's true. <laughs> super shallow. So, okay. All right, so make sure that you have your three brushes, uh, small, medium, and large. And you can have flat or round brushes. It doesn't matter. You'll want to have a paint rag or paper towel and a old cup of water to wash your brushes in 
and I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's do a toast. Let's toast to hydration. I, you know, I've got like blackberry wine going on here. I made myself a like a wine cooler. <laughs> I might go get a beer. Yeah, you but can do that. We'll after, do that we'll after toast, the toast. Yeah. So let's toast to summer weather not being quite so hot. Hopefully, like the next several days, it'll be cooler. It's supposed to be about and ninety just, tomorrow. Yeah. Cheers to you guys for painting with us. Cheers. Cheers. You gotta have that me time. I know a lot of you, your projects are getting way behind because I hear about it all the time. Oh, I've got projects piling up. Well, it's two things a month. There's a lot of days in a month. Make sure you're taking that me time. It's yep. just a couple hours, you know, and it's not a hard cleanup or anything like that. So make sure that you're you're doing that for yourself. It's really easy to get oh. super busy. So we've only got a couple people watching, so we're not going to be too uh, off kilter to take a second. This uh, We're doing the live stream for Cascading Falls on Friday. Yeah, two in one week this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a little bit behind. We've been a little busy because we've got... Um, we do have our new space now. Which, yeah, that, so next time we film outside of this Friday, next month's filming will be at the yeah. new place. Yeah, and we're pretty excited about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we're really close to being, we considered trying to squeak it in tonight, but we've got a little yeah, bit of some crazy. networking stuff. <laughs> and actually, I would have been nice because it was a lot cooler in that studio. It was, it's got great AC. And it's a big and space. And this beautiful brick wall that you guys will love behind us. This brick wall that's half covered with stucco. This looks like this old Italian villa. It's super cool. Yeah, it's actually just the old original plaster it that is. somebody 110 year old with. space. And it's supposedly think, even haunted. So maybe we'll have some like ghost appearances. <laughs> we might. I've actually, what most of what I've heard about if that space as far as haunting is music. Yeah, and I haven't like felt any weirdness or anything at all there. And I'm usually pretty sensitive to that kind of thing. So I don't think there's anything there. <laughs> It's pretty creaky. It was a teenage teenage girl who told us that it was haunted. So well, I think I think any building that 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 is that old has a chance. Char yeah, it does, and it's got that extra character. Yeah, it's kind of fun to, to say, oh yeah, it's haunted. Oh, sorry. All right, let's go ahead and get started, ah. and we'll stop jabbering at you. Yeah. Are you me, okay there, Paul? Well, I was just doing this. Okay. Now He's I'm having fun with the new equipment. I'm learning it. Okay, so we're going to start with white. We're going to mix white and Bahama blue to make a really pale blue. That's what's going to be in our sky. And we're going to sketch the bear out with that color. So I'm going to take my middle-sized brush. Go ahead and dip it in your water cup and kind of swish it around. Dip. Dry it off on your towel. And I like to use mostly white, so I'm just going to scrape a little Bahama blue over there. And let these two meet in the middle. I'm going to go beverage up. All right. You can catch up. I, I'm pretty confident in that. All right. So you should have this really pale sky blue, sort of bordering on the t minty toothpaste color. And let's talk about drawing the bear. Pretty easy when it's broken down by shape. You have your, uh, your little page that shows how it's broken down. There's a big circle in the... It's right about in the middle of the canvas. It says upper right part of the, or middle right part of the canvas, but it, it's really close to the middle. So even if you put it right in the middle, you're going to be just fine. And then we draw the snout, which is actually, it starts off kind of squarish. And once we get that done, then it's real easy to make the under the jaw, in front of the chest, the ear and back of the neck. So I'll show you all of that. Don't be scared. Anything that you draw right now can be completely redone and painted over because we are going to layer, layer, layer like crazy. And so there'll be plenty of opportunities to completely correct and change what you've done. So let's think bowling ball. It's about the size, the circle that we draw is about the size of, if you've ever gone bowling and you've picked up those really light bowling balls that are like six pounds, it's about that size. Sometimes it's helpful to put a dot in the middle of the canvas and then draw a circle around that. If that's helpful for you, go for it. If you have like a big coffee can or something you could trace you can do that but it is a an animal there's no need for like perfect Ching. dimensions here they're very organic so see how i'm just sort of dotting it out non-committal style because a lot of times i'm going to end up changing some things change is good yep and i didn't go with my <laughs> dot exactly in the middle that doesn't matter. Sometimes, sometimes it's nice to have a little reference point. 
So Paul's about the size of a small bowling ball. Something just landed on my painting paint. I think it was a little bug. <laughs> a little summer bug. Okay, so now the snout part is pretty easy. We've got this, this is the rounded part of the forehead and our ladybug's gonna be down here somewhere. So we really want the bare snout to be pointed down that way. It's not super long. Just gonna go angle off here. Remember if it ends up too long, ends up looking like an elephant trunk, you can redraw it, super easy. You know, I actually had not even noticed the ladybug on this painting. That's why it's called Lady Bear. And now I, I get that now. Wow, you've been hiding under a rock. <laughs> so this, instead of going straight down, I do slightly angle it back. So it almost, started, it's starting to look like a pig. And then this is gonna connect to here. Yeah, so it does, it looks like a pig with a slightly longer snout than normal, than a pig would normally have. Keep in mind, you can pause the video if it feels like I'm going too fast. Du -du 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 -du. Pause, pause it, it anytime. And uh, now let's let's go ahead and draw, actually, since we're down here, we wanna keep this round jaw area. And then somewhere here, we're gonna just round off the bottom of the canvas for the front of the chest. This bear is kind of leaning forward and I wanted it to look like that, like she's really interested in what this little creature is climbing on the blade of grass. The ear is just a simple half circle up here and you, <laughs> whatever room you have left, it can go off the canvas or you can maybe uh, scoot this part down if needed. Mine's gonna just touch the very top of the canvas. On the original I have about less than a half an inch of space. Oof. So I'm not going to worry about it. I almost went Mickey Yours Mouse. Yours looks like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Must be Wednesday. <laughs> and then the back of the neck, oh, just bother. to emphasize, they're really thick and broad through here. And so this is going to come and it's going to go right up and off the top of the canvas right away. So then what I'm going to do here is just take a look at everything and see, you know, is this too anteater-ish? Does it go too long? Is the ear too big? Is it Mickey Mouse, like Paul started to say that he was doing? Um, and, like, I feel like the nose on mine could be shaved down a little bit. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too long. So I'll, all I'll do is just kind of redraw a line here, and I know that's going to be covered up and become sky color. If you do a shorter nose, it's just going to look like a cuter, younger bear. So that's up to you. You want an older mama bear or a little young thing? <laughs> it's up to you completely. Let's go ahead and sketch the inner part of the ear. I don't have that on the, on the page of instructions, but we can do that now. It's just another little half circle inside that one. And then we can wash that brush, take a breath, take a sip of whatever you are sipping on tonight. And if Hopefully you, you have as, something. If you spend as much time in the sun as I did today, maybe just a glass of water would be yeah, good. Yeah, a glass of water would be good. That beer is a really pretty color, though. Is that the Hefeweizen? No, it's a, it's a cliptic Oh, you bought it. IPA. You didn't get it from the studio. No. Okay. All right, we're going to take our biggest brush now. And most of us might need to remix some more of this paint color. It's a very loose, sloppy mix. I'm kind of marbling them together because we want a streaky background. The streaky background where it's it's got white and the light blue streaked in with it ends up giving the impression of clouds. So let's go ahead and just, my brush stroke here is I'm dabbing it on like this, using the wide side of the brush and just dabbing it on there. Every once in a while I'll dip it right in straight in Bahama blue. Mm -hmm and get some of that on there to create this patchy sky. Today was kind of weird. It was, uh, I kept looking out and thinking, gosh, it seems kind of darker outside than what I was expecting. Cause you know, it's supposed to be so hot. And yeah, there was a cloud cover for a while. And then some of our friends said it was raining a little bit in Sherwood. Our hometown, well, I guess we can call that our hometown, yeah? Well, we've lived here for almost 17 years. Yeah, we can call it our hometown. We've probably lived here, well, almost as long as we lived in our home. That I grew up in. Yeah, it's weird to think. So now, as we get everything colored in around the bear, 
we can have a look and see if how how the shape of everything comes together and if there needs to be further correction there's always time and opportunity to fix and correct i think that's what's nice about starting when we're doing a uh starting with just two colors it's really easy yeah. to make adjustments and I feel like kids could do this painting too. Mm -hmm. um, it would be, it's a little more detailed than I would do, teach normally for a kid's class, but a pretty adventurous kiddo who doesn't get too upset when things <laughs> aren't perfect um, would be, this would be fine for. Because this is a pretty, it's a pretty detailed painting compared to what we run for the kid's classes. And kids whip the paintings out really fast in an hour <laughs> this one's gonna take a little longer so older kiddos with a good attention span why not i think it would be a great one so now i'll just i'll kind of take a look at my bear and when i come in later with some dark blue to sort of outline everything i can i feel like i could round out this jaw a little bit more it got kind of lost in there and they really do have they have a lot of shaggy fur under it's like a double chin under here actually reminds me a lot of our older dog she has that she reminds me a lot of a grizzly bear like a little miniature grizzly bear because she's kind of round <laughs> and she has like that hanging furry flesh waddle thing <laughs> going on there all right Looking vaguely bearish, I would say. Just having a look at mine. My natural inclination here is I want to kind of shave this down just a little because I can always build it up more if it's too much. Mine does look like a little bit younger bear. It's the kid. Okay, let's wash this. Uh, actually, no, don't wash the brush off. We are going to mix a little bit of our daffodil yellow and a little bit of our sapphire blue into this mix to create a very light grass color. Let's see. So it's this color back here, Paul. Okay. It's just a little yellower. It's more of a yellowy green. It's saffodil. Saffodil. <laughs> yes. Like, oh. oh. I rolled my brush handle through the paint. I hate it when I do that. Painting foul. Oh, and then it hits my other brush, so they're both polluted. So I'm going to take, and I'll use the vertical edge of this brush, and I just sort of flick some background grass in here, and it can just mix with that wet paint. It can come right under the chin of the bear. It can even overlap into the bear a little bit, because when we paint the fur on, it won't <laughs> overlap anymore. This is not the grass that we're going to paint the ladybug on. We do that with the actual... Uh, small brush and a darker green. This is just background grass. These are the film extras in the movie. <laughs> it would look weird if they weren't there, but they're not, you know, the, the main part of the Now you're stealing my analogies. Here. Dude, I am going to so write a coffee table analogy book. Paul analogies. We'll call them Paul analogies. Okay. <laughs> you're like, anything that'll give me that attention, I like it. <laughs> that was really mean. <laughs> Well, your Paul analogies are very, very, very... Um, or should we call them shiliosities? <laughs> They're very good. I always think, like, when I listen to you teach, I'm like, where does he come up with this stuff? You don't want to know. <laughs> My favorite one that he uses is... Um, and it's really good for teaching students how much paint to put on their brush. Because a lot of times... Uh, first time painters want to load up the brush with a whole lot of paint and there's parts in the painting where we want to do that but there's parts in the painting where we're like just a little bit of paint and so the uh, Paul analogy he uses is <laughs> he says um, imagine you are at a Mexican restaurant that you've never been to before and so you are completely unaware of how spicy their house salsa is and so when you dip your chip into it you're not going to load it up like, you know, well, I guess there's some people that probably would. I would. But you're going to just kind of take but it I like, easy. <laughs> I like Go spice carefully. Though, so. so your brush is your chip. Your paint is your salsa. Go carefully with it. Okay, so I've got uh, this really vivid grass here. I feel like it's a little more yellow than what's on my original, but I'm just going to rock it. 
I think that'll and actually go be with nice. It. What will be nice? With a little bit of extra yellowish. Mm. So you're saying it's a happy little accident. I think you planned it that way. <laughs> you're just I trying to spin it off. Let's wash the brush now. And we're going to go back to our medium brush, which mine rolled into a whole bunch of different colors of pinks. It literally oh, rolled dear. right on the palette. Oh, dear. And I'm going to wipe off the handle and rewash the brush. So it got white on the brush part. And this time we are going to mix two beautiful colors together. We're going to mix Bahama Blue and Sapphire Blue. Those two together, about equal parts. It makes this kind of 1970s denim blue color. That's what, what are you talking about? That's a Canadian tuxedo if I ever saw one. <laughs> what? Canadian tuxedo? I've never heard that. You've never heard what that? What is a Canadian tuxedo? It's all denim. <laughs> what? It's like when you wear denim pants and a denim shirt and a denim jacket. Are you putting jacket. down Canadian people? I can't help it that they have a preference for <laughs> denim. I've never heard that in my How life. How have you never heard that? I'm going to pull a little more dark blue in here. No, somebody just bailed out of the live stream. Maybe they were Canadian. <laughs> Jeez, you need to be careful. I think they're proud of it. <laughs> I have never heard that before. Okay, so let's go ahead and carefully, this is where you can redraw things. And like if you needed to bulk out the forehead a little more because maybe your sky kind of made it sink in a bit, you can do that. I'm going to just sketch along the front here. I'm going to mix a drop of water with my paint. It's okay to be a little shaggy like... with this, yeah? What? It's okay to be a little bit shaggy with yes, your brush. Yes, shaggy work. is good. And then I'm going to come down and trace this little snout. Up here where the nose is, you can do a little bump out. Just to sort of uh, start suggesting that the nose does bump out. When you look at a bear from the side, there's a tiny bit of a bump. And then we're going to come down to there. And then as we get under this neck area, this is where I want you to really add some long, shaggy hair. And then down the front of the bear. I love these round brushes for this. Yeah, they are good. Then I'll go around the top of the... Let me check something. Don't don't keep painting. Don't keep <laughs> painting. They're not I'm seeing... just I'm just like touching up They're what not I seeing just drew. It, though. Where did my phone go? Oh, no, there's our connections back. So Okay. You know, we had weird internet things earlier today, so maybe Yeah, it's just I think the, it's uh... getting overloaded. Um we're back. Okay. Sorry about that. So I'm going to, under the chin, under the nose uh, and mouth area, I'm just going to add a little thicker blue and down the front of the chest and then on the upper back here, just so it's a little bit wider band of this color. And let's go ahead, even though we layer another color in here, go ahead and fill in the ear. The inner, yeah. Is that what we're shooting for? Yep. And next we're going to draw the eye and, oh, really? um, yeah, just the, the beginning shape of no, it. We're buffering again. Okay, we're back. It's our pesky internet. It's being really fickle today. It was out earlier, around 1 o'clock. Okay. All right. I'm going to take my smallest brush to draw the eye. Don't get nervous about this because it's really easy to just redraw it again and again and again until you get it right. If you feel like you'd be a little more comfortable with a pencil, feel free to do that. Where to place the eye? I have it placed kind of right where, so the forehead bumps out and it's, if I were to, right before this comes down, if I were to drop straight down, it's right about here. And then we'll, we'll draw the nose part, which will be a little easier than the eye. For the eye, when painting an animal, first I'll determine where I want it to go. You can mark a little dot just as a placeholder, which will look funny for a while. <laughs> I do a sort of a V shape, like a rounded V like this. So it's a V like on its side. Because we are looking at the side of the eye. The little dot in there makes it look really weird right now. And then I'm just going to round here for the eyeball. So you're doing this sort of 
curved V and then the rounded part for the eyeball itself. So we're, we're seeing the eyeball from the side, so all we're seeing is that round lens. And then for the nose, just go ahead and draw a scoop here to border off where you want the nose to be or where the nose ends up on the face. They do have pretty big noses, probably bigger than what I did on the original painting, but uh, it still looks cute. I looked at several pictures of bears to draw that out. I didn't go by memory. I was like, I need to see the anatomy. I feel like my eye is too high. Yeah, you can drop it down a little bit. Now for the mouth, I just started off with, so this is gonna come down here. Their mouth is way down here, and I just kinda of start with this line that's sort of a, it's kind of a smile, but kind of not. It just kinda of goes straight back, maybe with a tiny curve on the end. So their mouth is pretty far down on the snout. It's not like halfway, it's further down. And now I'm gonna wash my brush. How are we doing on there? Good. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna have us do next is we're gonna start the basic fill in of the bear, which um, we add a whole lot of different colors. Anything that we're doing like this that takes a lot of layering, oops, I think I bumped something. It goes through a, a really rough phase, so it's not gonna look super pretty until we start adding more of the detail fur that's on the top. So we are working from the inside out. Um, let's mix a greenish color. I have it, so we are mixing, let's see, it's the grass color. So that was Bahama blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of daffodil, and a little sapphire, four colors. So I'll start by mixing Bahama and white. I think we're gonna run out of white, Paul. Now I'll put in a little of the yellow, the daffodil yellow there. And then just a touch of this sapphire because it's going to darken everything. Oops, <laughs> as I glob it on there. This actually, this color is pretty good. I'll add a little more yellow to it. What would you call this color, Paul? I don't know. <laughs> I call that color I was out in the sun and laid. Don't ask me those questions. I'm going to use my big brush because that's what I use to mix it with. But if you're more comfortable using a little bit of a smaller brush, please do so. Mainly, I don't want to waste the paint that's already on this brush by washing all of it off. <laughs> so I'm coming down the front. We are going to go right up to the eye. And around here. So I'm leaving a real skinny edge of my dark blue outline that I did, but trying to get rid of a lot of it. A tiny thin edge will be nice a nice divide between the sky and this color. If we didn't have a line there, the sky, t the tone of the sky is a little too close to the tone of this color, so like one could get kind of lost. I'm going to bring this color up under, I, sort of like I'm framing a little bit of a cheekbone here. And in a second here, I'm going to start blending in a little more sapphire blue. Now you can do this bare. If you're not a subscriber to the kit and you want to do the painting, you can do this in any color. Uh, you could do it in like natural colors, browns and, and reddish brown, that kind of thing. Or you can do purples, yellows, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to blend a little more sapphire into this just to darken it a couple shades as we get away from the face. And I just overlap these two wet paints so they kind of blend together. Let's go right up to the eye. My brush stroke, if you notice, is it's just like we did in the sky. It's kind of a dabbing motion. Don't worry about getting super close to the eye because we are gonna shade around the eye in a dark color later on. Let's go ahead and get the front here. If you can leave a little skinny line from the mouth, that's great. If not, we'll repaint it on. If 
feel like mine's ending up a little darker than the original. That's okay, actually. If you look at my... Here's the picture. You're, you're probably more closely close into it than mine. It's funny how when you teach it, it ends up being a little bit different. I'm going to blend a little more sapphire as I get away from the front of the face. Oops. And the reason for that is our light source is the sun. And I just kind of imagined when I designed the painting, my light source is over here. So the sunlight is sort of glinting off of this. You really see that when we add the yellow highlights later. So back as we get away from the face, it's going to get darker and darker. Is that dark enough? No, I need more. And these don't have to be perfect mix of colors. They can be marbled mixes. Every time you add more sapphire blue, it can be a little more marbled. We'll switch to a smaller brush in just a bit. For now, we are using the what we call the bulldozer, <laughs> the big brush, just to get the most color on the quickest. So I want to color in about the full part of the face, right to about here. And then we're going to switch it up a bit. I think I just flung some paint somewhere. Here it's all over the place. Okay. So our, <laughs> our bear looks very army green right now. And it looks kind of funny. Everything's very roughly done, but you do start seeing a little bit of a three-dimensional thing happening here because of the shading that we've put in by darkening the color just a bit. And we bring it all back to light with the yellow later on. Having it dark underneath the yellow, though, is wonderful because then when you put the, the yellow highlights on and you do it with little fur-like brush strokes, you see the depth because you see some of this dark showing through. So whenever we do a paint your pet class, I always have students with uh, like golden dogs or white dogs paint a darker base coat. And it freaks them out at first. <laughs> but then when they come in with the light hair, it's like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> so what we're gonna do next is we are going to start painting in, well, I kind of refer to them as, they're actually kind of like tiger stripes or stretch marks even. And what it is, is, um, and I, I noticed this in all the pictures I looked at of bears, and I noticed it in my shaggy dog too, that there are these lines and they're just gaps between the layers of fur. And it's just like a little gap. You can't like see their skin or anything, but you just see... Um, Let's be honest, it's their fat rolls. I think it is. <laughs> it's creating their fat contour. rolls. Creating Oops. contour. We're going to... We need to paint... Ooh. Got to set that just perfect. We're going to paint some contour. So let's uh, let's wash that big brush off and get all that lighter green color we were just working with off because we are going to go to straight, I believe it's straight sapphire blue. Let's see. Yeah, sapphire. So on the, the bare body, <laughs> the bare body, these are going to go kind of down at an angle, like just kind of like tiger stripes. So I'll dip the, this brush, pick up a little sapphire blue. And that fat eye, big bone. <laughs> I'm going to start right here, just right below the back part of the ear. And I'm literally just going to dab down. It's going to look funny at first. I'll put one here, too. Maybe I'll overlap that a bit. So I'm going to come in with lighter color, too. And then I'll do a few back in here. You know what the best thing about these paintings that we do together? You is, learn so much from me. <laughs> yeah, actually. It's, you know, like, it makes me paint outside of my normal comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's a big part of growing as an artist is stepping outside of that comfort zone here and there. Yeah. And I feel the same when I start working with yours. 
So I'm going to brush some of this using the thin, thin edge of this brush. I'll brush back. So remember the fur goes when you pet your cat or dog, you don't pet them this way, you pet them in the direction of the fur. We want to leave these stripes so it's just kind of this upper area. I'm getting some more furry paint on. And then through here too I can get a little bit. And down in here. I do feel like I could blend this in a little bit better. It's kind of starting to look like the Grateful Dead Bear, but it has, you know, that kind of tie-dye look. Which is, it's kind of cool, but it, I will show you how to blend this green into this if you have this really sort of harsh line like I do, where it looks like it's got a collar on. It does remind me of Grateful Dead Bear. I'll wash the brush and I'll go back to this army green I was using. If I have some left on the palette, I might have to remix it. Oh, I've been stealing it. You have been. So when I remix, I will just usually hold my brush up to the color and it doesn't have to be exact, but close is good. And I'll just kind of brush from the light color back into the dark color. The, luckily for me, the dark color is still a little bit uh, wet, so they're going to blend together pretty nicely. And you can even use your finger or paint rag and just lightly kind of smudge that around. Then you get a little bit softer blend. But you can really see now that we're, we're going from light to dark. And we're going to start adding some real dark in there with the purple tones in just a bit. But for now, I'm going to take, I'm not even going to wash my brush. I'm going to take Bahama Blue, and I'm going to paint some fur between these tiger stripes. In fact, I feel like I could mix a little sapphire with that just to darken it a bit. So we're going back to that, what I call the 1970s denim. Oh, that's too, that's too dark. That's going to make my little gaps not show up. So I'm leaving these tiger stripe lines, but thinning them out just a bit by bringing color on each side of them. Thinking in, uh, so I'm using the skinny edge of the brush thinking shaggy furry thoughts <laughs> the hair here gravity is going to naturally pull it down i'm going to blend some of this into the wet dark blue i just put on because i know that's going to blend nicer than it was look at that that looks pretty cool that faded really nicely blending the dark into the light when the paint's still wet that is why I absolutely love oil painting. And that's what I uh, did up until I started Van Gogh. I was an oil painter who kind of dabbled in acrylics here and there. And I, I had done a lot of mixed media stuff too, so I was doing some paintings where I worked with both oil and acrylic on the same canvas. But because the paint doesn't dry for weeks and sometimes even months, you have all this blending you can do forever and ever and ever and in some sometimes it, that can be frustrating and you want it to dry pretty fast and that's where little add-ins come into play because you can um, buy a like one thing I used to use is something called liquid and you mix it with your oil paint it makes it dry really fast we should do an oil class on here sometime Ooh. let us know if you guys would like that <laughs> I think it would be kind of fun. It's been forever. I would be totally rusty. It's been at least 10 years for me since oil painting. Okay, so what I want to do now is... I mix. would love to do that, by the way. Yeah, you'd be good at it. We're going to mix sapphire and ruby to make a deep purple. So let's wash the brush. And... The deep purple that we make is really dark, so sometimes I'll add a touch of the Bahama blue to it to lighten it just a little bit so it's more of a grape, like a grape soda color. Grape ape. <laughs> so yay, we get to use some red. Bring that over. I always like doing there we go. this as a, oops, I just bumped the table. That was me. <laughs> um, I always like using a dark purple instead of just going for black. Yeah. So this is really dark. Let me show you what it would look like if I add a little Bahama blue to that. 
just a tiny bit. Go a little bit at a time because it's really easy to overdo it. That will lighten it super fast if you use too much. So I do like it a little lighter. I do like that Bahama Blue mixed in there. This is a nice thing you get from the video because I don't think it says it on the notes. That's why doing the video always works out pretty good. Here, I'll put this back here. So I'm going to finish off my bear with this color. And I am going to use this color in some other parts too. You know what? I kind of like just me personally, but sometimes when I'm doing like this kind of a color combination and I'm doing this for my darkness, mm -hmm. I kind of like to leave it a little bit on the reddish side mm. of purple. It just, um, to me, it creates an interesting dynamic. Okay. But that's just me. While this is still wet, I definitely have a very harsh uh, light to dark thing going on. So I'll even take my brush that already has this purple color on it. I'll dip it in the Bahama Blue just lightly, tiny bit of paint, and blend that right at the edge where the two colors meet. And it will make those colors blend together because you've got the purple is wet. And so your Bahama Blue there is going to blend and become a bit lighter purple. Now I will say, since we are doing a bear, my thing I was saying a minute ago, be careful if you use it a little bit on the reddish side, you don't want it to look like a murderer. <laughs> murder bear! Murder we don't want bear. a murder bear. I'm going to bring some of this grapey purple down under the jaw and we want to start getting it into the not the front part of the face but down in here because it needs to balance out so I'll take that on my brush and I'll come under I'm gonna start right under the mouth mm -hmm. and shade down in here just mix it right in there with that blue this is exactly where you want to be careful with the amount of red yeah <laughs> it'll look like it just devoured some poor creature So right through here is going to look kind of funny because it suddenly goes from one color to the other and it just looks like we have one whole different chin color compared to the upper part of the mouth and we do. I'm going to get some of this dark purple. I'll put it on some of these things I call tiger stripes or stretch marks. Just dab it on there. You can leave some of the blue. Mainly I'm just trying to get some of the purple forward without covering up a lot of this pretty light coloring I have going on. And I'm going to use that really dark purple to fill in the inner ear. So I'll just kind of dab it on there. We have the dark blue on there already, so you can leave bits of that showing through if you want. We have a lot more fur to add, so it's definitely in the very rough phase at the moment. <laughs> and this is where I'm going to have us switch down a brush size. So we've been using this big guy. Let's wash that one off and set it aside. We might use it again. But a lot of what we do next will probably be with the middle size brush. So picking up my middle size brush, I'm going to shade under the eye. And if you have the instruction sheet, you can really see it. It's really apparent on uh, that instruction sheet. I use just a little tiny bit of that this violet purple we've been working with. And I'm just going to... Work it in kind of like I'm giving this guy some eyeshadow contour or something. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for. Sort of creating a bone structure.
are you uh, thinning that down at all? Or? I just had a very small amount on my brush. Okay. If you get too much, don't worry about it because we are going to bring in some uh, other paint colors on top here. So it will it will sort of blend in when you overlap it with the lighter colors we're going to add in. I want to make a color that is very similar to our grass color. I don't know what happened here. I must have dripped some water. Drippy dip. <laughs> So our grass color, if you remember, was four colors. It was the Bahama blue and white with a little yellow and a little dark blue. So a little daffodil and, and sapphire. And you know, you don't have to use much white. Maybe not even at all. Let's try it without. So we'll do Bahama blue, daffodil, which will turn it bright green, which is a great color to use if you like that. I feel like I got a little too yellow. I could use that's pretty bright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put the tiny bit of sapphire in there. Stir it round. You stir it right, right round, baby, right, right round. round. That's a little better. It didn't really darken it a ton. You guys can't see, but I'm totally doing the dance. <laughs> So I'm, I didn't add any white with that. I am going to add a drop of water to the paint, just to just a drop or two, stir it around so it's thinned out. And this is where I'm gonna start making some fur-like brush strokes, right here. We're gonna add yellow to the front of the face, so you don't have to worry about that right now. But let's do this. You can add it around the ear. So it's very feathery type of brush stroke. Add the water into your paint. It will definitely help. If you're using a flat brush, just use the skinny edge of the brush. Green bear. I am going to have us do some plain turquoise too. Like I said, we get a lot of colors going on in here. Bring this up on the back. As I start getting close to the purple, I'm just going to let the paint run out on the brush. So it can it can get into the purple a little bit, but not too much. There's no need for that. And then if you're going to go with these tiger stripes in the way, I want you to um, go between them. Slightly overlap them in some parts because that's going to make them look like they are in the background like the this fur is in the front area and then these are just kind of like little gaps <laughs> i don't really know how to explain that ridges ridges crevasses <laughs> and you can uh, you know soften them up a little bit if you feel like they're too harsh just by adding more of this furry color sort of overlapping Next month, we get to have uh, the little wood ornaments again. I like to throw those in once in a while so we're not just always doing canvas. And I think probably September, gosh, it's, it's so weird to think that after this next kit, it'll be September, which that's the time I'm really inspired. Oh, you know what? You're right. Next month is our last month. Right? Of, yeah. yeah See, to I told you, you I was out in the sun all day today. <laughs> um, as we get into September and the fall, that's when I am my most inspired. So I will paint like crazy. I paint way less in the spring and summer. And it's probably just because I'm, <laughs> I'm autumn and winter at heart. And uh, so, yeah, I love all the, the fun fall color paintings and Halloween paintings and all of that. We'll bring our little coffin board back, which, I mean, you can purchase those anytime. We always have them. But they're a lot more fun around Halloween. Well, it depends. 
Depends on your personality. Just bring it, yeah. Yeah. If you're a little bit goth, there's I don't, no I am wrong definitely thing. a little bit goth. <laughs> okay, so I have a lot of this greenish color going on, and I want to not wash my brush in my drink. I'm going to uh, wash the brush in my paint water, and I'm going to go right for Bahama Blue, but I do want to... You can see I'm running out of room on my palette because there's two of us using it. I'm going to put a little bit to the side and I'm going to add water to it. That's a little much. Hold if on. you're using an easel, are we buffering? No, something weird happened. Okay, we're good. If you're using an easel and your canvas is at an angle, you just want to make sure this isn't so thin that it's going to drip down your canvas, although that might be kind of cool. And I'm going to start in the face. I'm going to add this right around the ear just Bahama Blue with a little bit of water. Oh, our camera went way fisheye. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> How did that happen? Here's my belly. <laughs> I can try to fix it it's real The quick. bear was thinking about fish. <laughs> that looks, I mean, for a cer certain sort of project, that would be ideal, I guess. So this, like, on top of here looks really cool. Hold on just a second. What the heck are you doing? There we go. That way people don't have to look at my belly. I wonder how long your belly was showing. Not very long because I saw it happen. <laughs> That's weird. So maybe we have a ghost in here, like, flipping buttons on our... Yeah, I don't know. Could be. So this Bahama Blue mixed with water is a very nice fluid mix for doing these like wispy, like angel wing <laughs> feathery brush strokes. It makes it look like we have this long haired bear and there's, it's in the sun and there's this perfect little gust of wind coming up for like a commercial on TV, a hair, hair care, hair product commercial. I mean, kind of like when we've encountered Fabio. <laughs> yes, actually, you guys will laugh at that. So um, I'm artist in residence of at Scamania Lodge, and they have me up there in Paul uh, once a month, or sometimes more, to teach painting classes to anyone. You can sign up. You, you don't have to spend the night at the lodge. You can just come on up for the day. And it's, I mean, it's an hour from Portland. It's not bad. But uh, there was one day we were there, I don't know, maybe a year into No, it's been like... Two or three years. No, I was saying a year into being oh, yeah. painting there. Gotcha. And this guy walked by us in the hall with some some woman with him, and, and Paul said, I think that was Fabio. I was like, what? You know, Fabio, the, the Italian guy. So we went like back. Like the Canadian goose on the <laughs> roller coaster, bro. <laughs> yes. I'm just adding more Bahama Blue with water back in here. So anyway, we... But when we got, we ended up going back to our hotel room, we were like Googling Fabio in Oregon or Washington. I always forget. It's Washington. And um, couldn't find anything. And then we found out later from one of the front desk guys that, yes, Fabio lives up there. He has 600 acres. He uh, races motorcycles, dirt bikes, and that's his hobby. And he loves it up there. And he eats breakfast and brings friends to the lodge all the time so we've seen him up there maybe three four times and there's always a buzz when he's up there yeah you can see the look on people's face they're like oh is that kind of like we were <laughs> is that who i think it is <laughs> and it's one of those celebrity encounters that is i think is the best kind oh yeah yeah because everybody knows who fabio is but mm -hmm. it's kind of like people kind of laugh when you're like i saw fabio and they're like what really <laughs> You know, it's not hey, like... Hey, don't be dissing on Fabio. No, it's a cool thing, though, because it's not like, you know, if you were like, oh, I, I ran into uh, Tommy Lee Jones, and people are like, oh, okay, Tommy Lee Jones. But if you, like, are like, I ran into Fabio, people are like, oh, you mean the guy from Fabio. the romance co covers? It's, it's And I will say, he looks really good. He takes care of himself. He's, like, 60. Super fit. Isn't he, like, 60? And tall, and he, he, he's got the long hair still. He's got this tan and he, he looks really good he's for... up Jen he's up <laughs> you can just tell he ta he's taking care of himself and I know like the the restaurant staff will say oh yeah he he orders like six egg white omelets and super healthy 
Okay, I'm going to add some of this Bahama Blue on the snout just above the mouth. And I'm this is the Bahama Blue with the water mixed in, using that same sort of fur-like brush stroke just to lighten this area a bit. And bring it up to blend into here. You can leave some of this dark green showing through just for depth. I'm now I'm coming up to that shaded patch under the eye and I'm just going to slightly overlap the edge of that and come up here. So I'm going a slightly different color. That's fine. You got I'm a using, green bear. Huh? You've got a green bear. He kind of looks like a giant avocado. <laughs> yeah, yours is very green. So remember, this is what I'm using right now. It's just Bahama Blue with some water mixed into it. So it's a thin mix that is uh, works kind of like a watercolor. Whoops, I didn't want to do that, but that's all right. And I'll come up above the eye here. I'm just going to curve with the way that the, eye, the brow would curve just a bit. And I'll get some under here. And here, at this point, I'm going to start curving like this to kind of go with the, the bone structure here. Always leaving a bit of the green showing through. We're just kind of lightening some areas. This is an intensive painting. Yeah, it's, it goes kind of fast, but it's got a lot of uh, additions of different colors. A lot of little brush strokes. Yep. Is it making you nervous? No. <laughs> Why would it? <laughs> now, if you feel like you've lost some of your uh, lines through here, which is super common, you can, at this point, while this is drying, you can wash your brush. And I would probably go for the violet color, which was the sapphire the dark blue and the red mixed together, sapphire and ruby. And you can lighten it up with a little Bahama blue if you need. But I would just kind of dab those in here and there in areas where you see bigger patches. I felt like mine got where I had a lot of the just plain blue showing. And I kind of wanted just my individual preference. I kind of wanted more of this purpley tone going on here. And anytime you feel like you need any, anywhere that you feel like you need to tone anything down, you can add that dark purple. Just a little at a time. Purple lit, just a little <laughs> bit. Wow, that's a lot of work. And mine is going to end up looking a bit different from the original as is normal, especially with animals. I can see already that one is, they're pretty close. This one maybe has a little more turquoise -y tones through it. I don't know, they're pretty close. We're going to start adding the uh, yellow highlight. So that is going to be a game changer. I always love this part. And I'll bring this in front here. We've got sunlight we can't see. It's up. Sun is up here off the side of the canvas and it is literally like glancing off the front. This is going to bring out the bone structure here and then it's coming down around the eye. Around so the brush strokes here will be curved. Then we'll go under this shaded patch here and then bits back in here where maybe there's some longer hair that's kind of catching the sunlight as the wind blows it. And we'll get some up in the ear too. We want to add the fur that kind of grows up over the edge of the ear too. I'll guide you through all of that, but first I want to have you wash your middle size brush. Take a sip of your beverage so you're not drying out. <laughs> too late. I'm dry. In this summer heat. I get to go do it again tomorrow. Wow. Fun for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna grab a little more weight. It looks like we have used a lot of weight, more than I planned. So we are, uh, next month you guys will get a whole new set of the... Well, some people will. Four, is it four ounce? Is that four ounce? Yeah, four ounce colors. Two ounce. 
Are they two L's? Yeah. Some people will. Okay. Not everybody. Uh, yeah, those of you who have been, let's see, the, the ones that went from June through. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. It's, Forget I said anything. Some of you will be getting your new paint because we ship it every three months. Mm -hmm. But some of you who, who have subscribed, subscribed since then, we just kind of start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Every three months you get those little bottles. So don't throw them away and try to conserve them. But if you do run out, we do have more replacement paint available via the website. We're sending bottles, though. We're not just sending like a... Like you said, conserve them. <laughs> what? Well, no, what I mean is don't use the whole bottle on your first painting. Okay, got it. I thought you meant save the bottles. No. Do recycle them. Okay, I'm going to mix yellow and white, about equal parts. And this will make a very buttery color. Butter? This yellow daffodil on its own is not my favorite tone of yellow. It's very, it's transparent. Mm -hmm. So if I were to paint it right on here, you'd see through it, and it's not a pretty shade of yellow. Until you mix some white with it, then it's perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start here brushing back, like following the, the hair. And then under here, I'll kind of curve this way. Now, if you wanted to just build up a little bit of more yellow, you could use this straight first yeah if you wanted to right? we are actually going to mix more white with it to get a, a ultra highlight on the very front bridge of the nose so this right here is going to be a little bit of a yellower mix. ultra highlight ultra highlight i don't want a ton of paint on the brush either for this kind of thing because we've already got the fur established this is just highlight so you don't need a ton i'm gonna go right under this cheekbone here Yeah, if you're ever using a, a yellow like this and you want to really make it pop, you've got two choices. You can either mix white with it, or you can lay down white first and then paint the yellow on top. Yep, that's the way to do it. So I'm going to come around on the front of the ear, too. And then if you want to use your smallest brush to get the, the little hairs that go right over the inner ear, I would grab that, dip it in water, dry blot it on your towel. I always like to start with the brush a little bit damp, as you guys know now from doing all these videos. <laughs> and I'm just going to flick some little hairs up in here. Maybe add a drop of water to the paint if it feels dry. I feel like tonight, I don't know if it's, it must be the heat and the oh, fan yeah, on. Sure. It just feels like the paint is drying really fast on the palette. And this is the brush you would use if you want to add little tiny baby hairs anywhere here. It's tedious. But I don't add them everywhere. I'll just pick some spots where you just brush a few on. So at, with this heat, adding a drop of water to your paint every so often works like a charm. I'm going to grab some highlight along here because the, the sunlight would be uh, glinting off of this part too. And then I think I'm going to switch back to my middle size brush and see how that goes because these other hairs that we highlight, they're a little bit bigger hair, so it's fine to have this bigger brush. So I'm going to, uh, I feel like this is not wet enough paint. There we go. I can tell Paul played around with the yellow a little bit, and I think he, or one of us, mixed a little more white in with it. No, I've been mixing over here. <laughs> okay, so that's fine, because I'm going to do that up in here anyway. But I do want to, I want to throw in a few straggler highlighted hairs back in here. Little wispy things. Not too many away from the face because we really want it to look like the light source is concentrated over here. It puts the focal point on the face, right? It does. And now I am going to 
add a few more here. <laughs> now I'm going to mix more white with yellow. So it's less yellow, more white. For a very like kind of a buttercream color. And when you mix paint on your palette, you always end up with a giant glob on your brush just because you're stirring it around. So I will wipe it off on my paper towel to get any excess off. And then sometimes I'll just redip the tip of the bristles in the fresh paint. And I'm going to come along, starting along this part, like the, the front of the ear, front of the forehead. And I'm just sort of dabbing the paint on. Yeah, that looks that looks good. I uh, like to have that mixed in with like the lower yellow tones. If you get too much and it looks like your bear got sprayed in the face with some mustard, I'll show you how to fix that. It's not a big deal. That was just one of the things I thought that could could potentially happen. So with this brighter, lighter yellow, I could add a couple highlighted hairs to some of these other yellow hairs back in there. It'd be fun to do a Bigfoot painting this way. We did. It's called May, May the, the 4th. 4th. <laughs> I don't know why there was Bigfoot on May the 4th, but it was Bigfoot. Oh no. So if you feel like your bear looks like it got sprayed in the face with mustard and you overdid the yellow like I definitely did I see them up on the monitor I see the lower one is way more yellow than the one up there what I'm gonna do in that case is I'm gonna come in with a little Bahama blue so that's just your straight turquoise and I will paint bits of that in here just to break up the yellow And if the two colors are wet, they actually blend really nicely together to make sort of a greenish tone, which we know we've been working with the whole time. So greenish tone is just fine. Do mix some water with your Bahama Blue like we were doing back in here, just because it's gonna flow a lot better. And this is how we paint. If you get too much Bahama Blue and you need to add more yellow back in, that's how you do it. It's just a series of reworking and doing over and layering 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 and we all do it i did it when i created the painting and i'm doing it now making adjustments yep making adjustments and it does look really funny right now because this cheek highlight is really intense and uh i mean the cheek shadow here is really intense and we don't have the shading around the eye or anything like that yet So I'm going to um, have a shade around the actual eye socket in just a minute. And that's really dark. You can see that there. And then it, it kind of touches this shadow here. And so they'll kind of go together a little better. And then I think what I'll do is maybe have us add a glaze of some Bahama Blue over this sh shadow just to lighten it a touch and have it not be so strong because mine definitely looks very strong and we'll add some hair down here later on that uh, makes this not look like it's so half and half but let's go ahead and shade around the eye. I'm going to flip my instructions over I do try to follow them as closely as I can um, just because a lot of you guys do the use the instructions too all right we are going to fill in the nose and eye with black uh, let's see, does it talk about, I know it talks about shading around the eye. Yeah. I'm going to change the order of the instructions here. I'm going to have a shade around the eye first and then we'll fill in the eye with black. So you can use your middle size brush. The color we use around the eye and it really is, it's kind of circular. At first it looks a little bit like a panda bear. 
But I want you guys to mix sapphire and black. It's a little more blue than black, so maybe two parts sapphire. So I'll, I'll put a little glob here, and then I'll use like half as much black. The black will darken it right up real quick. You don't want it to look straight blue, but you don't want it to look straight black. It's somewhere in between. It's a soft black. And I just gradually add till I get it the way I want it to be. And it is really dry, so I'm going to add a drop of water. And I'm going to start by shading around the front, the inner corner of the eye. Don't be scared. I know it, it's kind of a scary move. Then I'm going to come under the eye and then over the top, just like we're adding a little eyeshadow. You can dab it on because then it will look more like fur like. And now it looks really scary. I'll have it come close to my cheek shade here. Creepy bear! And I'm going to now put this brush aside and I'm going to color in the nose in solid black with my littlest brush. Do add some water to that black paint. It will be helpful if you're in a, a room that's above 75. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll trace the front shape of the nose and kind of redo that. So here's the shape. It, the nose is going to come out flat and then it's going to kind of come back sharp like that. They have a, a, a big kind of almost square like nose. And color that in. And like most animals with fur, bears, dogs, whatnot, they have a shade, shaded fur under their nose. And I think I'm going to go back to that blue and black mix for that. And my, I'll use my little brush. And I'll start back in here. And it, I'm going to do like these hair-like brush strokes. Just to shade this little stash area. I feel like my paint has almost a little too much water mixed in it now. And you can create a lip that kind of bumps out right above where this mouth comes back. Go ahead and draw a more smiley mouth on there if you want. It will look a little out of place at first. Kind of looks like some kind of weird like anime character or something. It's Monokuma. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, I just, just gave it a little smile. Kind of like the way dogs have, like they have that that little like teardrop shape at the end of their mouth there that a lot of times makes them look like they're smiling. Now I'm going to fill in the eye solid with black and when you look at their eyes just like when you look at like your dog or cat their iris the colored part of the eye fills in the entire eyeball you don't usually see whites of the eyes and of course if you do that a lot of times that means your your pet is alarmed or scared so yeah I'm gonna color in that whole shape remember we did that kind of rounded V with the curve on the front it disappears into the uh, shaded area around the eye until we bring highlights in. So for now, it's going to look like your bear has a giant hole in its face. If it looks like that, you're doing it right. Now I'm going to, like I talked about, lightening up this shaded area. If yours is already a little softer than mine, just leave it. But you can tell the difference between this one and this one. There's a pretty big difference. I 
my tendency is to want to lighten it just a bit. I could probably leave it and just be like, oh, it's a different variety of bear. Uh, but I am going to lighten it a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my littlest brush and water down Bahama Blue. So our palette is looking glorious. <laughs> Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a little bead of water on the palette and then I take a tiny drop of Bahama Blue a little more at a time to get a nice watery mix. Not, not something that's going to drip off your canvas, but this little brush doesn't hold a lot of paint anyways. And I'm just going to draw, maybe I'll dab this on the paper towel. So I've got a lot of excess paint on it. I'm going to draw little tiny furry brush strokes on top of that shaded area. I want to see some of it showing through, but I'm just softening it up. Especially if you go around the edges of it, that helps. You can use your finger or a paper towel if you don't want to touch it. Actually, I'm having the uh, having to do the opposite. You're having to darken it again? Yeah. Yeah. I had lost it. This is just the process of layering and all of that. And yeah, if you lose it and you want to bring some back in, you'll take that violet color. Oops, you painted on me. And just bring it in gradually. If you can blend the two wet on wet paint together, <laughs> that's ideal. I probably just mix the color maybe a tiny bit too dark to begin with. All right. I don't know if that made a huge, huge difference, but it did a little bit. Let's get a highlight on the nose and then some fur down here so that this part matches this with texturally. The color we're going to use for both of those and the brush, we're going to use our smallest brush and we're going to use our Bahama Blue mixed with Sapphire Blue. I have a little bit of that in here that's still wet, thankfully. That was the color I called 1970s denim earlier. So it's just about equal parts, maybe a little more Sapphire than Bahama. You don't need much, so just mix a tiny bit or just use what you've got left if you have it. And on the front of the nose, I'm just going to do a little slash in that blue color. We add a lighter highlight here as well. But this is kind of a, kind of like how we did the, the yellow and then the brighter yellow. In fact, looking at mine, my brighter yellow could be even brighter. Might do that. And now I'm going to take this color and I'm going to add little bits of fur under the chin. I feel like I need a little more Bahama Blue mixed in mine. And a drop of water. Do use the water. It helps with the fluid, uh, keep the paint fluid for these nice brush strokes. To do these furry brush strokes. As I get up in here, I'm just going to blend it into the rest of the hair. So what this does is it keeps that lower lip area dark, which it would be. It's away from the light source. But it's not leaving it like solid dark like it was. In fact, one thing you can do, you can experiment with it. If it works, it works. If not, you just repaint some other color back in. I could take in just a little bit of the Bahama Blue, which I still have some that was mixed with water, kind of. I have to remix it. And I could add some of that. So that's this color that was up in here. We had some Bahama Blue up in there. And I'll add little bits of that color down in here just to tie it together even more so. Oops. And then as this dries, paint always dries a tiny bit darker. So I think when it dries, it'll be the right color I want it to be. I could add a little bit of that up in here too. A little bit of this blue. With this painting, 
painting in colors, there's really no major rules. You can just have fun with it. I mean, until you see a green and blue bear, <laughs> you're pretty much are <laughs> on your own. Speaking of, oops, I almost washed it in my brush, washed my brush and my drink again. Speaking of green, we are now going to leave our bear alone for a little bit while the face dries. And we are going to draw these little individual grass blades. So if you're behind a little bit and you're retouching some stuff up, feel free to pause the video and then get back to it when you're ready. Um, we're gonna mix straight sapphire blue and daffodil yellow. So there's no white or Bahama blue in there. It's just sapphire, so your dark blue, and yellow. I'll use my small brush. You know, I'm gonna use my medium brush to mix it. I hate mixing with the small brush. It's kind of hard on the brush. Yeah, it's really hard on the brush and it's too little to really make any color. So this makes a beautiful, vivid emerald green or grass green. That's what we want. I am going to throw a drop of water in there, especially since we're using the small brush and we're going to want long blades of grass. So a nice bit of fluidity there is good. So I'll take my little brush, dip it in that watery green, and then I'm going to hold my brush back a little bit on the handle so I have less pressure. And I'm going to just do a quick trace of a grass blade. You might have to go over it again. And it might split at the top into two. And that's actually that's the way, way it does in nature anyway. Let's think about where we want to put our ladybug. I'll plan that out. Usually I would have planned that out before I drew the first blade of grass in. I think based on the line of sight, like if I were to draw a dotted line, dude, right about here is where I'm going to put my ladybug. So I'll make a blade of grass that kind of goes up through there. And these can go taller than the grass behind it here and there. That's a big one. I feel like this needs a lot of water to do it right. I don't put a lot of these, just a few. Really, it was just a nice uh, little focal point for putting the ladybug on. I can add a few back in here. Unimportant grass. <laughs> the important grass is the one the ladybug is going to be on. And just like trees have branches, some of these grass blades. There's different types of grasses that have, you know, little tendrils of other grasses growing off of them. I don't know if they're gra if they qualify as grass if they're, or if there's some other plant. Ugh. I keep wanting to rinse my brush and my drink. So one thing that's bothering me and will continue to bother me until I change it. And you might have something like that on your painting too. I feel like this is a, I'm gonna leave this golden yellow, but I feel like along the bridge here, I want it to be brighter and lighter like this one is. So I had a lot of white mixed in that. So I'm gonna touch that up while you guys work on the same thing or, or something else. So I'll mix more white, less yellow, like a tiny dot of yellow to white. There, that's better. I'm using just little broken up brush strokes. So it kind of suggests fur. And go above the brow bone a little bit. There, I like that better. Maybe a few over here. Yours is Papa Bear. Papa Bear and Mama Bear. Because he's popping off the canvas. <laughs> what? He's not. Mine almost kind of looks like a little bit of a wolf hybrid. <laughs> Wolf crossed with the bear. <laughs> if your outline is still showing and it feels a little too harsh, you can always take, uh, let's see, I'll take like the Bahama and Sapphire mix and just kind of fur that out a little bit. 
just to disturb the outline so it's not so uh, straight. Probably did it too straight to begin with. Not 100% necessary, but it's just one of those things I just noticed. And if you need the mouth to show up a little more, you can use your little brush and a little bit of black because they do have black lips. At least I think. I've never kissed one. They do. <laughs> I don't plan on it. I can say from first-hand <laughs> experience. What? You've never... <laughs> You've never been that close to a bear. I saw one on TV once. <laughs> I've seen a bear in the in the wild before. <laughs> so we have our little blue highlight on the nose. I also want to add a Bahama blue highlight. So a little brush. And I'm just going to put that up here. I like to add several blues with the highlight. And then I'll finally add white to that in just a bit. We are to the point, though, that we're going to highlight the eye and we'll, uh, I'll, we'll do that with white and then we'll add a little white highlight sh a final shine to the nose. We'll paint the ladybug and then we're going to go back and add the fluttery eyelashes. So uh, this is where we want to use a super light touch and a tiny little ball of paint at the end of the brush. I want this to be pretty pointy so I washed it off and while it's still damp I'm just going to twist it into a little point and then I'm going to dip the very tip of those bristles into white. Just pick up a tiny bit. And I go along the bottom edge of the eye, and this is not white of the eye, this is just a little shine that is, uh, the sunlight is picking up a little shine on the inner eyelid, that little water line part of the eye. So it's, like mine's ending up a tiny little thread of a line, and that's what I want. If it ends up being too much, paint black right back on it because if it's too much it'll look like he's surprised go a little at a time tiniest bit of pressure you can possibly manage gosh our paint is so dry I hate it <laughs> Challenges of live painting. Now he kind of looks like Stoned Bear. <laughs> He's very sleepy. How about that? And then I'll do, so just to kind of indicate the glassiness of the front, very, very thin line. Oops, I think I spit on my canvas. Very thin line uh, down the rounded part of the eye. And it's not white of the eye, it's just you're seeing the edge of the eye, the lens part of the eye. I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can see up close. Now what is going to transform this finally is the little round highlight that we put on the eye. And I'll take a little ball of white paint, put a little dot right here, just a little tiny one. And then if you have room, you can do another one. So hold that up there. Look at that. So cute. Glassy. And then the black fluttery eyelashes will add after this white dries. And they're going to come out past this shadow that's on here. And that's part of the reason I, why I had us use black and blue mix. So that if we did solid black around here, the black eyelashes wouldn't show up as much. Let's go ahead and take, oh, well, we've got the white on our brush, which I just washed off. Let's put a little final white shine on the nose. So you'll have the two blues showing and then finally a little white shine. And then we're going to paint our ladybug. We're almost done, believe it or not. How are we doing time-wise, Paul? I mean, let me see where we're at. Uh, I can't tell. Oh, oh, we're just about an hour and a half in. Perfect. Okay. The ladybug is literally just a half circle in red. So again, kind of draw that invisible dotted line out to where, ah, <laughs> I must have water on the handle of the brush. So draw your invisible line out to where the view, eye kind of lines up with. I'm going to draw a little half circle in red. It can be a fat little ladybug. 
color that in. So I'll hold that up to the camera. You can just see it's like a little oval. Then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to draw the black head, which is tiny, just a little round dot at the top. The ladybug is done very simple style. <laughs> and if you can manage a super thin line with your brush for the antenna on the ladybug, you can do that. Or you can use a fine point Sharpie if you happen to have one of those in the house. But I'll just go for it with the brush. I'll hold that up so you can see the tiny little antennae. <laughs> And then black dots on the body. I'm not going to draw feet on mine. I did on the original. Well, I guess I could. They kind of hug the grass blade. They're like the size of the antenna. <laughs> Itty bitty little feet. Here's our, our special zoom in. And now black dots. We can all manage those. That's pretty easy. What, however many you can fit on here. I usually try to fit like three if I can. But it's a pretty small space. Do you remember the ladybug theater up at the zoo? Yeah, I totally do. I wonder if it's still there. I can't remember. Is it the children's museum now? No, no, it's not. That was in a different area. I have no idea. We never took our kids to that kind of thing. We just were like, let's just go to the zoo. <laughs> I am going to put a little white shine on the ladybug itself. Uh, let's see where I have it on the original. I have a little one on the, on the black head. Just a little dot. <laughs> can hardly fit anything on there. And if you can manage to fit one on the red part of the body, you can, but totally unnecessary. It's just me going extra. I was going to do that, but I just kept, the colors were just bleh. I mean, they, <laughs> they were just kind of mixing. So n the last thing I'm going to do is the eyelashes on the bear and I thought of them a lot like um, if you've ever seen the way a horse's eyelashes are they're long and fluttery and very straight so I didn't do any like special curved curled eyelashes so I didn't think that would look quite right although you've got a blueberry you can do whatever you want uh, I did mix water a lot of water with black with your little tiny brush so let's think of this like super skinny lines. So I am mixing black and water with my little tiny brush. And then I'll, here's what I usually like to do when I'm working small like that. I'll take that and this is pretty dry. Uh, and I just kind of twist my brush as I pull it and then I end up with less paint. It just knocks off that excess paint on the brush. And sometimes I'll read up the tip of the bristles into some fresh paint just so that it has a little ball of paint on the bristles. And then I'm going to go from this eye forward. I don't do too many. Just enough to where it kind of just shows here. And that did it. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to hold this up here. Look at those lashes. <laughs> it's a lady. <laughs> and then anything... <laughs> I remember that Saturday Night Live skit. Anything else that you look at that you feel like you need to add on to or touch up, now is the time to do that. And it, you can go back to it even a week from now. And, you know, put it put it somewhere where you see it often. <laughs> if you, you know, if you feel comfortable with that. I know sometimes hanging your own work is scary. Not nah, I done. It's scary for me to hang my own work. But you can always touch things up. There are things you'll notice tomorrow, maybe, that uh, didn't really pop out today. Usually, the case is you'll like the painting a little bit better the next day cause as, as you get away from it. Because, you know, we've been working on it for an hour and a half. And as you work, our brain, as human beings, we tend to sort of calculate, oh, I made a mistake there, I made a mistake there. And it just kind of compi compiles in your head. And it's not a good thing. We want to let go of a lot of that. But so as you're working today, you've got that going on in your brain. And tomorrow you won't have that so much. You'll, your brain is going to forget a lot of that stuff you've been thinking about along the way. 
and you'll look at your painting with a completely different perspective. Hopefully it'll be a good one. <laughs> Hopefully. But that is it. I'm just kind of doinking around here. You'll want to sign your painting since you are the artiste. Done. And I'm going to put my signature in red because I didn't really, you know, I'm actually I'm going to make pink. I'm going to mix Bahama blue and red. It makes kind of a lavendery pink. Getting all crazy up on it. Where to sign it? How about right here? <laughs> Everything's great, and then I mess up the signature. You could make another ladybug on there. That They were pretty easy to make. Like, you could make one going the other, like, scoop that way for the body to be on the other side of the blade of grass. It would have been really cute to just put it on the end of the nose. That would be cute. Go ahead and put one on the end of the nose if you feel so inclined, but... Yeah, you can see minor, um, you know, very, very similar, but different for sure. And that just comes from teaching and painting things without a template involved, you know, you know freehanding it. And uh, also using all these crazy colors. Let's see what Paul's looks like. So I'm going to put that one up here. Let's bring yours over. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> He's a chubster. Mine looks like a badger. <laughs> you know, I think the, the ear is maybe uh, a little mm -hmm. low to the head. That's probably why it's giving you that impression that it's a badger. I don't see it as a badger, but I do see these glorious rolls. Oops. It's a <laughs> well-fed bear. What's going on up there? <laughs> It'll pop on. I don't know. It's our camera settings. Mine's real shaggy, and, uh, you know, her, her rolls are a little... Oh, there we go. A little more hidden by the, it's us. the We're fur. Back. But yeah, you did a good job shading your yeah. badger. <laughs> it does kind of look like a badger. I think it's just this. I think if the ear went out a little rounded, more that way. I think but... it's the, the white patch, like the lighter <laughs> patch around the eye, probably. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Maybe, maybe. I guess looking up at the monitor on the wall, it looks more that way than when I it looked on the computer. I can't unsee it as a badger. And maybe it's like it's got a little bit longer and pointier. It could be. I don't know. But you know, bears are bears are all different, and just like human beings are, they're, they look different in appearance. Have you ever seen? Um, yeah, we looked him up one time. The the mix. It's a hybrid between a pizzly. It's a pizzly bear. Is that a a polar bear and a grizzly bear? Yeah. Mixed together. So you guys Google pizzly bear. It's really, they're really cute. They're like, they, they have brown, I think, they're almost patterned like a panda bear in some ways. Mm -hmm. Brown and white. It's, it's just cute. us now. Super cute. Well, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please uh, click the like button and that helps people view our channel. Please uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications if you want to see every time we post new content. Hopefully with our new, new filming studio and this cool new uh, mixer that we got, we'll be able to film like crazy. A lot of times I have to wait for Paul um, to come home and connect everything because I don't trust myself. But with this new thing, he thinks I can do it on my own. So a lot of times I'll be doing some videos during the day while he's working outside doing stuff. <laughs> and the other thing is... It's his normal job. I know that there's a lot of... We actually went over 500 subscribers last yeah. month and that's not 500 people getting art kits that's just people on our youtube page um but uh if you are enjoying it and you are a subscriber feel free to pop over to our patreon site and yeah you know, subscribe and uh sponsor us every little bit helps we've got one subscribe or one uh patron rachel yeah. sip we thank, gotta you, rachel. thank you so much for the support you've <laughs> been a great a support to us all along, not yeah. just in Patreon, but, but also in, in studio subscriptions and, and everything. Subscription. So if you want to have that same kind of treatment that Rachel's getting and our appreciation, feel free to... <laughs> have your name read online. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see you guys on Friday. We'll be painting... Do you have your painting in here? The um, Yeah, it's right behind you. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll grab it. This is called... Oh, <laughs> it's really attached there. This is called Cascading Falls. And we, we wanted to do something that, oh, yeah, I forgot it needs to come back there. We wanted to do two pictures that sort of go together. Like, this looks like the environment that the bear might live in. Like, maybe he's over here, or she, lady bear, uh, fishing. 
somewhere. And so, yeah, the, the paintings go together in that way, but also using the similar color, the same color palette, mm -hmm. just very differently. So this one I'm excited to do. I, I really like, like you, I, it's a challenge for me. I usually work doing whimsical animals and things. Yeah. And do, doing your paintings along with you that are, you know, very natural landscapes. It's a, a good, rewarding challenge. So There's almost no yellow in this painting, I notice. <clears throat> Almost no yellow. There might be a little bit. We can add some. We can. We can do whatever we want. So, it's not even a real place. So. <laughs> not even. It's made up out yeah. of your head. Yeah. So uh, we will see you guys next Friday. Same channel, same place. There's a link already for this video up on YouTube mm -hmm. that it has a countdown or just tells you how many days are left. And you can uh, probably click the bell on that to get the notification that reminds you, that, oh yeah, this is tonight. <laughs> It's a good Friday night thing to do. Hopefully we'll have cooler weather. But <clears throat> I, <Okay. clears throat> yeah, I need to sip. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to log out, everybody. Thank Just you wanted... so much. That was fun. We'll see you next time. And we're going to go out. You're going to hear us for a little bit, but Bye. we're going to say goodbye. Bye. <clears throat> and people can still hear us. Mm. But, yeah. <laughs> You sound like the Charlie Brown teacher. <laughs> <laughs>